The epistle is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10. Brethren, these things came to pass as examples to us, that we should not lust after evil things, even as they lusted. And did not become idolaters, even as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, even as some of them committed fornication. There fell in one day 23,000. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them tempted and perished by the serpents. Neither murmur, as some of them murmured perish at the hands of the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as a type, and they were written for our correction, on whom the final age of the world has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. May no temptation take hold of you, but such as man is equal to. God is faithful and will not permit you to be tempted beyond your strength. With the temptation will also give you a way out that you may be able to bear it. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from St. Luke chapter 19. At that time, when Jesus drew near to Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known in this thy day, even thou, the things that are for thy peace, now they are hidden from thy eyes. The days will come upon thee when thy enemies will throw up a rampart about thee, surround thee, and shut thee in on every side, and will dash thee to the ground, and thy children within thee, and will not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. And he entered the temple, and began to cast out those who were selling and buying in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple. Please be seated. First of all, please keep the prayers in your, in your prayers. The priests pray for the priests on Wednesday, so this is July 28th. We will be planning our day of recollection for the priests. So please pray for the good spiritual health, spiritual good of the priests. We'll be on pretty much recollection from about noon and through to the next morning, Thursday morning. So please keep us in your prayers. Also, I'd be willing to bless items for you after Mass. If you have some religious goods to be blessed, you can bring those forward. I'll sit up here as usual. I put the items there and I will bless them. Remembering that all items blessed then become sacramentals, meaning that they provide grace to you according to their nature, according to their means. And so you want to revere them properly. Treat them with respect. Even that goes so far as our medals and our scapulars, which we should show great reverence to every day. Thank you, Saint. And even for you, dear couples, don't forget that with your rings also. When you are married, I hope the priest blessed your ring, or a double ring, one for each spouse, and in that case, you should be reverencing your ring every day. Please do read through the bulletin. I am hoping that most of you do that when we send it out. Taking note of the retreat schedule, taking note of our life or crisis series that's being given out, put out by the Society of St. Pius X, most especially Father Wiseman's recent interview or podcast with Andrew Latham. 
limits of obedience in the case of suppression. So that was July 19th. So please do check that out if you wish. He has some very good points, some very good helps to understanding where we are today and what it is we do as Catholics, as traditional Catholics. So in view of the recent motu proprio of July 6th, do you know what that is? That's the Traditionis Custodis, the letter of Pope Francis. I have to read to you today, which is my pleasure to read, the letter of Father Don Davide Padurani, our Superior General of the Society of St. Pius X. He lives in Menzing in Switzerland. He wrote a letter which is now also up on our website, if you wish to look for it. But we have been requested by him and our district superior in Kansas City to read this letter from the pulpit on this Sunday. So all of our missions, all of our chapels, all of our priories had this letter written, written for us to read to you and then to pass out copies. So even after Mass, there'll be a few copies available for those of you who would not be able to read it again online or you would want a copy as reference. So those will be available in the back after Mass. And again, you can always print it out off the website. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. This Mass, our Mass, must really be for us like the pearl of great price in the Gospel, for which we are ready to renounce everything, for which we are ready to sell everything. Dear members and friends of the Priestly Society of St. Pius X, the motu proprio, traditionis custodis, and the letter that accompanied it, have caused a profound upheaval in the so-called traditionalist movement. We can point out quite logically that the era of the hermeneutics of continuity with its equivocations, illusions, and impossible efforts is radically over, swept aside with a wave of a sleeve. These clear-cut measures do not directly affect the society of St. Pius X. However, they must be an occasion for us to reflect deeply on the situation. To do so, it is necessary to step back and ask ourselves a question that is both old and new. Why is the Tridentine Mass still the apple of discord after 50 years? First of all, we must remember that the Holy Sacrifice in the Mass is the continuation in time of the most bitter struggle that has ever existed the battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. This combat culminated at Calvary in the triumph of our blessed Lord. It was for this struggle and it was for this victory that he became incarnate. Since our Lord's victory was through the cross and through his precious blood, it is understandable that its perpetuation will also be marked by conflicts and contradictions. Every Catholic is called to this conflict. Our Lord reminded us of this when he said that he came, quote, to bring the sword upon the earth, unquote. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. It is not surprising that the Mass, which perfectly expresses our Lord's definitive victory over sin through his atoning sacrifice, is itself a sign of contradiction. But why has the Mass become a sign of contradiction? within the church itself? The answer is simple and increasingly clear. After 50 years, the various elements that confirm the answer have become obvious to all well-informed Catholics. The Trinity Mass expresses and conveys a conception of Christian life, and consequently, a conception of the Catholic Church that is absolutely incompatible with the ecclesiology that emerged in the Second Vatican Council. The problem is not simply liturgical, aesthetic, or purely technical. The problem is simultaneously doctrinal, moral, spiritual, ecclesiastical, and liturgical. In a nutshell, it is a problem that affects all aspects of the church's life without exception. It is a question of faith. 
faith. On one side, it's the mass of all times. It is a standard of a church that defies the world and is certain of victory. For its battle is nothing less than the continuation of the battle that our Lord, blessed Lord, waged to destroy sin and destroy the kingdom of Satan. It is by the Mass and through the Mass that our Lord enlists Catholic souls into His ranks by sharing with them both His cross and His victory. From all this follows a fundamentally militant conception of Christian life that is characterized by two elements, a spirit of sacrifice and unwavering supernatural hope. On the other side stands the Mass of Paul VI. It is an authentic expression of a church that wants to live in harmony with the world and that lends an ear to the world's demands. It represents a church that, in the final analysis, no longer needs to fight against the world because it no longer has anything to reproach the world. Here is a church that no longer has anything to teach the world because it listens to the powers. It is a church that no longer needs the sacrifice of our blessed Lord because, having lost the notion of sin, it no longer has anything for which to atone. Here is a church that no longer has the mission of restoring the universal kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ because it wants to make its contribution to the creation of this earth, of a better world that is freer, more egalitarian, and more equal responsible. And all this with purely human beings. This humanist mission that the men of the church have given themselves must necessarily be matched by a liturgy that is equally humanist and emptied of any notion of sacredness. This battle has been waged for the past 50 years, which has just seen a highly significant event on July 16th. Is not a simple war between two rights. It is indeed a war between two different and opposing conceptions of the Catholic Church and of Christian life. Conceptions that are absolutely irreducible and incompatible with each other. <clears throat> In paraphrasing St. Augustine, one could say that the two masses have built two cities. The Mass of all times has built a Christian city. The new man seeks to build a humanist and secular city. Since Almighty God has allowed all this, it is certainly for a greater good. Firstly, for ourselves. We have the undeserved good fortune of knowing the Trinity Mass and who can benefit from it. We possess a treasure with a value we do not always appreciate, and which we perhaps preserve too much out of sympathy. When something precious is attacked or scorned, we begin to appreciate better its true value. May this shock, provoked by the harshness of the official text of July 16th, serve to renew, deepen, and rediscover our attachment to the Tridentine Mass. This Mass, our Mass, must really be for us like the pearl of great price in the Gospel, for which we are ready to renounce everything for which we are ready to sell everything. He who is not prepared to shed his blood for this Mass is not worthy to celebrate it. He who is not prepared to fight, to give up everything to protect it, is not worthy to attend it. This should be our first reaction to these events that have just shaken the Catholic Church. Our reaction as Catholic priests and as Catholic laity must be profound far more reaching than all those people and sometimes hopeless commentaries. Our blessed Lord certainly has another objective in mind in allowing this new attack on the Tridentine Mass. No one can doubt that in recent years many priests and faithful have discovered this Mass and that through it they have encountered a new spiritual and moral horizon which has opened the door to the sanctification of their soul. The latest measures taken against the Mass will force the soul to draw all the consequences of what they have discovered. They must now choose, with all the elements of discernment.
discernment that are at their disposal. What is the necessary, what is necessary for every well-informed Catholic? Conscience. Many souls will find themselves faced with an important choice that will affect their faith because, let us say it once more, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the supreme expression of a doctrinal and moral universe. It is therefore a question of choosing the Catholic faith in its entirety and through it, choosing our Lord Jesus Christ with His cross, His sacrifice, and His universal kingship. It is a matter of choosing His precious blood, of imitating the crucified one, and of following Him to the end by a complete, rigorous, and coherent fidelity. The Society of St. Pius X has a duty to assist all those souls who are currently in dismay and are confused. Firstly, we have the duty to offer them the certitude that the Trinity Mass can never disappear from the face of the earth. This is an absolutely necessary sign of hope. Moreover, each of us, whether priest or faithful, must extend a warm, helping hand to them, for he who has no desire to share the riches he enjoys is, in all truth, unworthy of possessing them. Only in this way will we truly love souls and show our love for the Church. For every soul that we win from our blessed Lord's cross and to the immense love that he manifested through his sacrifice will be a soul truly one to his Church and to the charity that animates his Church must be ours, especially at this present time. It is to Our Lady of Sorrows that we entrust these intentions. It is to her that we address our prayers, since no one has penetrated deeper than our Blessed Lady, the mystery of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of His victory on the cross. There is no one greater than Mary, who has been so intimately associated with his sufferings and his triumph. It is in her hands that our blessed Lord has placed the whole Catholic Church. It is therefore to her that the most precious thing in the Catholic Church has been entrusted. The testament of our Lord Jesus Christ, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Given at Benzingen, July 22nd, 2021, Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, Don Davide Padurani, Superior General. I have only a little bit to add, and that is to say, dear faithful, that we must study. We must know the truths, we must know the crisis, we must know what it is that we're up against. That we, what, what is we wish to protect, such as reading, studying the works on the Mass anything that can explain the Mass better to us, how to delve deeper into it, to meditate upon it, to pray it properly. I told my faithful at a catechism class today, there's so many things that tie in with this fight that we're in, always have been for these last 60 years, but now more especially, and that is the whole question of education of our youth, the whole question of actions and propriety of faithful, how we act in public, how we present ourselves. Also what we live in, the culture around us, to be able to see it for what it is. One of you recently had given me a comparison of the communist principles of coercion how that compares to what we lived through with the whole COVID crisis. It all ties together. If it's not the camp of our Lord Jesus Christ in His city, it's got to be something else, and we know what that is. The camp of Satan, the city of perdition. We will have to make choices, and I hope you've already made these choices, but every point of our life will require for us to make choices like that. Am I in with Christ, truly? Or 
twist. Great twist. It's a good letter. It says a lot. Some will take it hard, I suppose. But it's a fighting letter. Fighting for the truth, fighting for the one mass. This is the spirit of the Society of St. Christ. Many don't like it. Many don't like us to be harsh against the Novus Ordo and the Mass of Paul VI. Just ask yourself that question. Who stands in the camp of Christ? And what options outside of that are there? Nothing. The Spirit of St. Ignatius, when he gives us the meditation, the meditation on the two kingdoms, Kingdom of Christ and the Kingdom of Satan, what Satan offers us and what Christ offers us. And he then touches a little bit different talking about the three classes of men. Think about it, ask Our Lady, which Our Lady of Sorrows was invoked today. She who understood our Lord had put a cross and knows the struggles we go through, pray to her for guidance. In the name of the Father and the Son.